Yo, Jay Z just dropped Hova, baby. He just dropped his four, four. What do you? How do you say it? Four forty-four. We live. All right, we're doing it right now. We've, we've never been on an album this quick. Jay Z, four forty-four. Yeah, dropped half an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. We've never got on an album so quick. Um, man, it's probably it's midnight in New York or about twelve thirty in New York. It's about two thirty here, mm -hmm. so we can get on this shit almost immediately. Which is exactly what we're gonna be doing. I'm hype as hell. What up, yeah? The ten track album, which I think is good. I'm always a big fan of a nice short album, especially when it's well executed. And the small, to me, the small the album is, the, the the topic that you're talking about, like the less you have to really think about doing too much with it. You got less room for error. Exactly. Less All room right. For error. By the way, this is Jungle Beats. Australia's plugged to the best hip-hop in the world, Alexander Mann. Yeah, what up, yeah. I'm Alexander Sandalis. Um, for those real quick, complaining about the echo and sound quality, it's a work in progress. This is what we got to do with so far. We're doing our best. Mm -hmm. If you want to help us with reducing that, if you want to, like, no point commenting, like, unless you guys can want to do something about it. So if you do want to help us, there's a Patreon below, which you can help support us to essentially help build uh, makeshift walls, help buy hundreds of dollars worth of soundproofing. Otherwise, it's going to take months. Please chill. Please relax. We're going to get to it when we can. If you want to help us with it, you can. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to do the best we can with what we have. Let's go. Wait, wait. Is everything going? Everything's going, man. Oh, shit. Right, this and that? It's been going since the call. <laughs> It's Holy been shit. going. You all that shit on. Yo, mom, I'm gonna be famous. Alright, first track is Kill. You wanna say anything before oh, we start? I think we need to give Jay Z a proper intro. We this, need to give Jay Z a proper intro. This is the king intro. of New York, Brooklyn, Man. motherfucking, we're talking about here. Jay Z, he ain't dropped something in four years since Magna Carta Holy Grail. It's been which, four years, shit. Which I thought was okay. I thought it was alright. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, my favorite project by him probably definitely is Black Album. I fucking love American Gangster as well. I think it's a very underrated album for one that's based on over a movie. Also, of course, the original Blueprint and Reasonable Doubt. They're my four favorite albums from him. He is a goat. Like, I think he's multiple goats. He's a legend. He's uh, regarded as, you know, he's, mm. this man has had a hand in, in defining and changing the identity of hip-hop yeah. around the world. Someone asked me who's the most influential, most powerful man in hip-hop, I always say Jay-Z. And he's a businessman as well. He's I'm not a businessman, business he's I'm a, a businessman. Business you fucking know it. Ah! Shit. Um, really an inspiration for myself, someone I look up to highly, and um, I'm always excited when he drops new music. He doesn't overdo it. Yeah, he's, you know, he's not dropping a song every week, you know? Mm. Do we know what features are on this album? We Should don't. We no, let's not look. I, I'm not gonna look. This doesn't say features. I, um, do. I can see. I can see one on the artist one and one next to it. I'm, I'm not looking at the names, but I can see features. Okay. Oh shit! One says uh, you want to know what one is. You want to know? Frankie Ocean is on this joint. Oh, Frankie shit. Ocean. All right, y'all. So we're doing this live as well. So for you guys, if you're watching it here or on delay or here, shit, I don't know. You know. Camera to look at. There's too many. All right. Jay Z's a legend. A lot of respect for him. Can't wait to just press play on this. I'm too excited yeah, to yeah. even like. Talk anymore. Kill Jay Z is the first track. Okay. Let's go. Hands up. Kill Jay Z. Men never love me, you'll never be enough. Let's just keep it real. Let's go! Fuck Jay Z. <laughs> I mean, you shot your own brother. How could we know if we can trust Jay Z? <laughs> Yo, so that's um, that's Kill Jay Z. Right, let's see if it's on here yet. So we're gonna see on Rap Genius to see if it's uh, if it's on there yet. Kill Jay Z. Jay Z seems to be on some conscious type shit right there. There you go, it's on here. It's on. On me more. It says it's on. There you go. Right. You tell me if you've seen anything. Jay, Jay Z seems to be on his conscious type shit, really just trying. I was to... the first four bars. Kill Jay Z. They'll never love you. They'll never love you enough. When they'll never be enough. Let's just keep a real Jay Z. Fuck Jay Z. I mean, you shot your own brother. How can we know if we trust Jay Z? That's sort of what. Shot his own brother. I don't he really. Was, he said that ages ago in like, like his second album, didn't he? So I don't know the history like that deep. Maybe that's really obvious. Excuse me if it is. 
Mm. I don't know if he means like, is it, is it Astro Brother? Yeah, he shot his actual Brother. He did, definitely. And he talks about Cry Jay Z. And uh, he. Uh, what is he going about? Fuck wrong. He reflected on his beef with Solange. Mm. If only you could admit you're wrong. Let go your ego over your right shoulder. You let the same finish your breakfast. You egged Solange on knowing all along. Or right. you just say you was wrong. You, who's Eric Benet? I don't know. That's when Rap Genius need to like annotate it. It doesn't, hasn't. It, well, it, hasn't. it, just, it, just, came it just came out. Let the baddest girl in the world get away. I don't even know what else to say. Ooh. He's Ooh. talking about Beyond Say. He let her get away? Well, yeah, because you know we should drop the Beyonce album. And he says, I mean, go, Eric, Lemonade. Yeah. I don't even know what you would have done in the future. Other M words playing football with your son. You had lost it, 13 bottles of Ace of Spades. Damn, man. What it did to Boston. Nah, Jay Z. Bar Jay Z. It, it sounds like he might be com- coming from Beyonce's side of things in a way as well. Like, obviously, he's talking about himself. Like, he's being like, fuck, I'm looking at all my wrongdoings and things that, you know, that mm. I. But he's also could be, be coming in a way of like, that's how he sees other people perceiving him as well. Kind of reflective type of track. Yeah, I think it's just the way. The way he started this off is him just being like, you know, I may be a goat, blah, 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 but, like, I'm still, you know, a normal fucking person that fucks up. Mm-hmm. I'm not fucking perfect. Look, inside I'm hype as hell right now, so this is going to need a couple listens, Ooh, I already know, shit. from the start. People saying some of that track is the first The first one is a no-go, um, but, uh, you know, we got to give it a couple more listens. Yeah, uh, it, was, it, was, it was all right. Let's get to the next one. It actually just sounded... The Story of OJ. Yeah, I gotta ready to go, man. OJ Simpson, obviously, who they're talking about, just in case. Not orange juice? No, well, man, you might be talking about the origin of how orange juice became a thing. Like, people first ate oranges, right? And they're like, holy shit, this juice ain't too bad. Maybe apple juice is already a thing. And then they'll just... Look out, let's do this. <laughs> I'm gonna give you five. <laughs> hey, orange juice. fucking good track have heavily oh yeah, yeah yeah so that that hook right there sounded exactly like a 50 cent hook from his first two albums like the dun 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 like i can even imagine 50 cent on their hook sounding very similar to that and also the stage of that song where he had a very pusha t like flow as well with the two million f- yeah. uh one million two dun million dun with the end of with the bar mm, dun mm, dun dun mm. Dun deliver the next bar like, similar cadence but he still had his own flow as well so i feel like this is jay-z showing hey i've still got it i can still be quite versatile my flows and that beat was so good. That, that, that live bass, like the bass, like boom, 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 and the keys, like that was all fucking, fucking beautiful, It reminds me of like, Jay-Z really captures to me such a New York sound. And if you're, and if some of you are saying, how would you know what a New York sound feels like? Your accent, you're not from New York. That's mm. a perfectly acceptable thing to, to comment on. When my time I spent in New York, I re- after coming back and I listened back to Jay-Z, I'm like, wow, hold on. New York embodies Jay Z. Now, now I really feel it. Every time I listen to Jay Z, it reminds me of my memories in New York. And it's just that track. I say that all to say that track with the keys, the piano, um, the production by No ID definitely reminded me of some New York type beat we would hear. And there's some cool lines in that song as well. And it, it shows you still with a bit of bit of humor as well. Like, you know, when he's saying, like, um, in the first talk, it's like, you know, light, dark. Fork, real, and then at the end of it, he goes, I like that second one being dark. <laughs> so, like, he's still having a bit of fun as well. And the lines are just like, you know what's more important, throwing my way money at the strip club? Credit. You ever wonder why Jewish people own all the property in America? This is how it- they did it. And he goes into that shit. Oh, okay. So, fucking, some cool shit, man. So I'm just trying to give you a million dollars worth of game for $9.99. I turned that tool to a four, four into an eight, turned my life to a nice first week release date. He's still got bars, man. There's some good bars all over this track. He's got, he had four years to make these bars, so he better <laughs> have some fucking bars. Like, that is 
that track right there is like oh, that shit's dope that's a quality track man that's, um, a, that's, that's definitely gonna go in high rotation for me that track and re- let's remember this whole album was produced by No ID exactly so man. Let, let's, no wait wait is it, is it No ID it is No ID you're right yeah. holy shit let's get to the third track let's get to it which is Smile I let's go hey thank you for watching I appreciate it Hold up, hold up, I want to scroll back, I don't want to miss that It looked like an important, somebody tell them to keep the commentary to a 5 minute Nah man, we do this natural, we talk as long as we feel um, Oh exactly, we can cut out whatever we don't want like, yeah, Even if we're like, talking for like 15 minutes between track, like we're, if we're feeling a track We're we, going to get all this shit out Like we're not like other review channels, we'll make a 1 hour more life review I'm sorry, I'm going to get to Jay-Z, I know, but we'll make a 1 hour video for a review That's crazy, that's not heard of, right? Who does that? No one does that. People are like, hey, let's do this review and let's shorten it to 10, 20 minutes. So I can get all, all across all the points that I think are more valid than everything else I'm talking about. It's like, nah, we're going to get across everything that we think. This, even, is, this is music, man. Even if shit isn't valid, even if what our thoughts and what we're saying isn't exactly what they're talking about. Right. That's the beauty of listening to music and first reactions. It's like, it's purely what you think. It's purely what you feel. It ain't necessarily got to be right. You said it, man. I haven't heard Jay spit that like that for fucking. Don't tell me he didn't spit like that in Holy Grail. Nah, you're right. Nah, you're right. He was spitting Holy Grail, but he's spitting. I mean, now. like he's spitting now. And he's got like hundred bars. And he's talking about like fucking holy shit. Man. Like but, a lot of that. Went oh, look, over, look at this shit. Like a lot of that went over my head. Like look at this verse. That's verse three. That's verse. Yeah. Holy shit! Look at this shit. It's gonna take rap genius this is, about. This is verse three. Ten fucking, days to annotate fucking, that. Fucking ages, man. I really like what he's. I think it's his mother is Gloria. I'm not. I don't want to say grandmother. I think it's his mother Gloria. I, that was a really nice poem um, to finish that song off. And I'm just looking at some of these lyrics, man. Just like some of it's simple, but just like, man. I'm up a hundred in my millions. I got no ceilings. This feeling, and that boy need a baker to bring me joy. Stuff about the toy, man. He's just his wordplay is just so good on this. Holy shit. I love the way that he's structured this song. He's got the good intro, the good outro with his mother. He's got the, the two... Like, the first two verses are quite short. Like, they're very, they're very about the same length as the chorus. The chorus is quite short as well. And then that last verse, he just doesn't fucking stop. I wonder, what he, I wonder if he was like that when he was recording with no idea. He was just like, look, this third verse. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to keep writing. I'm going to keep writing. The thing fuck is, it, I'm going to keep spinning. You know he doesn't write. Like, he said that before on his second track. Like, you don't need no pen. He doesn't have a pen to write. Mm. He's writing. It's all at the top of the dome. Off the top. Oh, that's, that's so what he's revered for, what he's known for. Mm. Hey man, I need to listen to that track more. Like, I can't say I love it or like it or don't like it. Um, but I, that track? I, you know, I enjoyed it. I fucking love that track. That production was fucking, it sounded like something Kanye would spit on in like um, late registration sort of days. Or even Jay-Z in his sort of like Blueprint 2 sort of era, like that, or Dynasty. Like, those, those sort of beats is like, that's like classic No ID sort of shit right there. Like the last, the first track I'm still not sold on, but I'm feeling like it's tying as what we're hearing because Jay Z's being as open as we've heard him spit. Like, of course he was open a bit about the Holy Grail, but so far he's been like, not. There's been no luxury rap really whatsoever. I think he's realised that, like, you know. I think there was with the two million, a one million, two million type of thing, but it's oh, something guess. about buying a house. But then he always got, he always going to say that shit. Yeah, he's always going to say some version of it. Mm. Anyway. Fuck yeah, that was a, that was a solid tune. I'm very I'm very impressed with that. Next track is Caught Their Eyes. <laughs> my least favorite track right there i'm the same as well i thought 
once again the beat was very very old school but I feel like if you're gonna have Frank Ocean for a feature fuck get him to spit some bars get him to sing a hook that hook was very it just sounded like you could just it sounded like a sample honestly it sounded like he could have made a sample could have done it himself like I feel like that was a very very poor use of Frank Ocean yeah agreed but I feel like that maybe him and Frank were just chilling and then they would be like fuck it do you wanna, do you wanna help me on this track right here it just sounds like they were just fucking around a bit uh doesn't sound like a finished... I don't know, it just sounds like a kind of a more lazier track. Like, more casual, nothing too serious. It was a cool chord there. Court I, there I, I don't really know what Frank was doing on that track either. Like, I don't know, he, he didn't really yeah. have a presence on that track to me. Yeah, I don't think he had much of a presence. Like, you get Frank Ocean? I just, I just I felt thought. that he just gave that track a little bit something else. But the thing is, though, if you didn't if you didn't know that was Frank Ocean, say that was an unknown artist and you heard that feature, you'd be like, oh yeah, it's kind of nice. It's like, cool. if I didn't know that was Frank Ocean, I'd be like, that's a pretty alright feature. See, we have expectations, exactly, right? Exactly, That's man. the danger of what we do here, or what music is, or life mm. is. So yeah, um, that track I wasn't wasn't too big on. Neither. Especially after the last two tracks blew me away, so it's kind of like... I was sitting there going, fuck, could Jay-Z drop the album of the year? I was thinking that. I was sitting there going, fuck, could Jay-Z drop album of the year? He ain't done that for me in a long-ass time. And uh, he, you know, after that track, we're going to say, he probably hasn't. But you know, it needs more listens, obviously. Oh, for sure. Like this whole album, well. Um, the next track is called Title Track. Four, yeah, the title track, four forty-four. Um, uh, I want to see what this is about because I was thinking, is it a Bible verse? Yeah. Is it is it is the number four have some certain meaning to him? Like, let's find out about this sort of shit. Hundred. Yeah, yeah. Starts this song. Look, I apologize. Often womanized, took from my child to be born, see through a woman's eyes, took for these natural twins to believe in miracles. Took me too long for this song. I don't deserve you. I harass you out in Paris. Please come back to Rome, you make it home. We talked for hours when you were on tour. Please pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. So don't embarrass me instead of be mine. That was my proposal for us to go steady. That was your 21st birthday. You master faster than me. Oh my god. This is I feel like this track right here is Jay-Z's response to all the shit he felt through Lemonade. Like, through be- everything Beyonce felt mm-hmm. through Lemonade, I feel like this is He's his responding. response. And listen to the, the chorus, it's just this. I'm never going to treat you, never going to treat you like I should. That's the chorus. That's by Hannah Williams, that's so interesting. I think it's him being like... Like, he's, it's like him I'll respond- never be good enough? Yeah, well, it's him responding to everything, but it's also him saying like... Like, him saying like, I don't know if I can change... For what you want of me because right. this is who I am like I'll give you this but I'm not sure if I can be that but, but he's still saying sorry in a way as and he well. still recognises all these miscomings and faults yeah exactly I think that like I don't think he's necessarily okay with it I just think that he can't change some of these things because they're just embedded into him it's who, what makes him Jay-Z I thought that was a beautiful track and it, it takes a lot of courage to make a track like that because it's not cool to be vulnerable it's not cool especially for a guy like Jay-Z who's looked at like no other guy in the game or in this world. It's not cool to put your emotion on your sleeve when you're a person like Jay-Z. And Jay-Z even uh, wrote something on here. He goes, 444 four is a song that I wrote and it's the crux of the album. Just right in the middle of the album and I woke up literally at 444 four in the morning. Oh. Hence the name of the track. 
444 AM to write this song. So it came the title of the album and everything. It's the title track because it's such a powerful song. I just believe one of the best songs that I've ever written. Wow. There you go. So you woke up in the morning, 444, and like, fuck, I've got to write this song. I've got to get this out. I've got to do this shit. That's incredible. And I love is. that. It's a fucking very powerful song. He like. thinks it's one of the best songs he's ever written? Shit. Some of these bars, man. Meant to cry, die alone in these mansions, or sleep with our back turned. We're supposed to vacate till our backs burn. We're supposed to laugh till our heart stops, and then when we enter space with a dark stop, like fuck, That's man. Fucking He's got some bars on this thing. Can man. you go to the Menage a Trois line? Because he said something like, because Jay Z's obviously been mm. um, he's has issues with fidelity with Beyonce, mm. when, being with other women, and he had this really cool line about a Menage a Trois, and I, I can't remember who he's. I'm gonna find this shit. I also quite like the last verse as well, how it's spoken word. I feel like a part of me was like, fuck man, why would the beat this good? Why is spoken word on this last verse? And like, obviously with logic, like way too much of my liking, but this one was short. The last verse was him just sort of like, it was more, it was more thoughts that like, it was more the end of the track he was speaking his thoughts. Like, you know, we speak about is like, like what good is menage a trois when you have a soulmate? That's what he says. And he goes, you risk that for blue. If I wasn't a superhero, and that's in quotes. Face. You risked that for blue. Like that's what Beyonce's talking to him about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You did what with who? My heart breaks for the day I had to explain my mistakes, and the mask goes away, and Santa Claus is fake. And you go online and see for blue's tooth, the tooth fairy didn't pay. Holy, Holy shit, shit, man! And that's when he's and he's speaking at the end as well. So I just feel like it's him, just sort of like a bit more emotional because he's just like just saying it away, like he's just speaking his mind, like his. Like, the wordplay in there, dude. the metaphors he's using. That's Jay Z back to the fucking lyric, lyrical shit that I know him for. Like this, like the three. I need three, a drink. Three of the tracks I've heard so far are just like fucking, which is why Jay Z's at the top, man. Yo, go on, go on, rap genius. Go look up that that title Ooh. track, four forty four. There's some fucking good, good fucking lines in this track, man. Yeah, and um. And if my children knew, don't even know what I would do. If they ain't look at me the same. I'd probably die with all the shame. Man. And it's kind of, it sets out a blueprint for all the yeah. future people before him. Hey, don't make my mistake. This is what you're going to end up feeling like. Mm. Fuck. Holy, I love that. Holy shit. Let's, let's, let's get to Ooh, the next. Holy we could, shit. We could be on that for a while. Let's be honest. We could do a whole video breaking that down for 20 minutes. That's a fucking tune, man. And fucking shout out to No ID. That was amazing. Oh, beat. production. Oh, perfect. Oh, bro. <laughs> That's how good that beat was. Fucking hell. Come on your face, come on your teeth. I'll come everywhere, man. Oh damn. Next track is Family Feud. <laughs> Coming. What you think? That was cool. I like it. It was a good track. Got kind of interrupted, so my so my mind my mind flow of like what I thought of it is kind of going about out of whack. I can just give you some limes. Yeah. Ain't no such thing as an ugly billionaire. I'm cute. Mm, pretty <laughs> much. If anybody getting handsome checks, it should be us. Fuck rap, crack cocaine. Now nah, we did that. Black owned things. Hundred percent. Black owned champagne. And we merrily, merrily eating off these streams. Y'all still drinking Perry and Jewy. Huh. Is that you pronounce it? I'm gonna say yeah. There's some cool fucking vibes. I enjoyed that track. Again. I really like Beyonce's um I love how Beyonce comes in after the track after 444. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's kinda cool. It, yeah, it, that is really cool. It's kind it's of like, like, oh, like, we are still cool, don't yeah, worry. We still cool. Like we, we, we here. Like we just getting off like we just getting off our steam, but we yeah. still we still cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that. That was a cool track. Family feud, bruh. Very fitting, very... Oh, hang on, hang on, I forgot to tell you. At the end of each of these tracks on Genius, Jay-Z has a thing at the bottom. An annotation. Every track. Yeah, yeah, he goes, Family Feud is about separation within the culture. Like new rappers fighting with old rappers saying all these things. So the line is, nobody wins when the family feuds. Huh. So we've missed that for every track. Yeah, I can go. Uh, hang on, let me go, let me go back so to Can this. we do it at the end? The end of the album? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah still at the end of the album. Yep. I'll still do it from now on. We can go back to the album. Yeah. Well. Anyway, track seven of Jay-Z's 444. Bam! Bam! Wait, wait, featuring Damien Marley. Oh shit! You know him? Yeah, it's um, um Bob Marley's son. Oh, it is? I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's his cousin, sorry, it's his cousin. Okay, we might get some soulful shit. Yeah. 
So you familiar with that sample? The bum bum da da bum da da dun da da dun da da bum da da It's like a, it's a classic, uh, is, it, is, it a, is it a reggae song? A lot of rappers have actually used it before. Um, Cameron. Cameron used it for a track that got pretty big. Uh, who else used it? It's been used by a lot of people, but this is, I think Jay-Z's just picked it up and Damien Marley's come on and put his, put his spice on it as well. Cause I think it originally was a, a very reggae like track. So I love what he's done with the production. Once again, spinning bars, skipping leg day, the run day now. I fucking love best. that shit. That's the best, man. Cause I, I, I get that. I resonate with that. Like it's real shit. Um, it's the best line, man. Love no idea with the sample switch up. Love and Mar Damien Marley's feature on here is so fucking beautiful. They work well together. Really well. If you haven't checked out Distant Relatives, Nas Damien Marley's, check it out. It's a really good album. Uh, just really beautiful about African culture and just people in general. Uh, yeah, at the moment, this album for me is, is fucking stellar, man. Like I said, one, one or two tracks that I was a bit iffy about, but like I said, I'm going to go back to this album and listen to it more, but at the moment, the good or the great is outweighing the average, so. 100%. Um, and you know, something interesting, one thing I wanted to point out is that there hasn't been real, like, bangers on here, like, things that are going to get you up and jiggy. Um, maybe that's the biggest one. Uh, compared to like songs like Picasso Baby or other ones that you know really get you moving, what do you think? Um, I don't think Picasso Baby is more a banger as well. You do or don't? Nah, I, don't, no? I think if you're talking about bangers, then it'd be Fuck Me, I Know You. Okay, yeah, yeah, with Rick Ross. And then um, what was that other one on there? But I can't remember it. But he didn't have too much on there as well. No. I guess uh, Jay Z's not that real type to do that. No, uh, well, I feel like he's always been one to always like to be on the radio up there, but like you know, Empire State of Mind, and like you know when he tried to do uh, what was the album that was really shit that he put out. Kingdom Come? Kingdom Come. Fuck, I hate that album. A lot of people like that album, but fair enough. That's, you know, people can like the fuck they want. But he tried to be quite radio friendly with the album and it really backfired on him. Uh, but yeah, I feel like with this album, like, I think I think 444 might have been the first tracks that he did for this album. He probably would have woke up, wrote this track, and be like, fucking hell, like. And then he would be like, wow, I've got all this other shit I want to write about. Yeah. Especially if he, I think that after he probably did 444, he'd be like, wow, I want to put this out, but... I don't want to just release a single. I think I need to have other shit based around it. And if you've noticed him, uh, most of the other tracks that we've heard so far, I'm not sure about this one, but they've been quite centered around the fact of his relationship and who he is as a person mm. and what that's Very like, self -reflective. the repercussions. And yeah, exactly. So I feel like, I feel like that 444 would have come out first yeah. and then he would have built the album based around that track. And I'll, I'll read what he says about this. He goes, the song Bam or Bam with Damien Marley, it's just jamming. It's just like the song. But it's secretly Sean Carter saying, man, you need a bit of ego. <laughs> it was puzzling me in the things that I've done. This is Jay-Z saying you need a bit of ego for us to write this point. So I, it's pretty much like I was saying, like, it doesn't seem to fit in the album con like in terms of what he's talking about wise. But like he said, it's just him having a bit of fun, just jamming. It's, just a, bit, it's a bit of like... Okay. So it's like, everybody knows how Conor McGregor walks into the UFC match. Yeah, you yeah. seen that? No. So, so ben, okay, well, Conor McGregor is one of the best UFC <laughs> fighters uh, in the world, right? Yeah, and yeah. he's so arrogant, or not, maybe arrogant, confident, whatever you want to call it. Um, very strong ego. He's walking in the ring like this. <laughs> so this, this is Jay-Z's song when you're doing these ones. This is, this is Bam to Jay-Z. Right? That's what I think. Only some people will get that reference, what the hell I just did there. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, is uh, Moonlight. But do you see what he's doing there? The, yeah, Jay Z needed a track where he went at the culture and be like, motherfuckers all sounding the same. Yeah. It's not creative. And it's like that's Jay Z's take yeah. on the hip hop culture. We're stuck in La La Land. Even when we win, we go and lose. We got the same fucking flows. I don't know who is who. We got the same fucking watch. She don't got time to choose. We're stuck in La La Land. We got the same fucking moves. Yeah. Exactly. Could he go on about it in a more like creative yeah. way? Maybe. Well, yeah, the hook is we got, we stuck in La La Land, even if we win, we're going to lose. Do you remember the track um, Nas album done on J? Did yep. Kaz, yep. Man, same sample. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, it is same too. Same sample, same sample. This sample, once again, is a sample that's been used quite a bit in hip hop. Okay. So that's why like it's kind of a hard song to get into, because I'm so used to hearing this sample. Okay. Um, it's like a subtle need to La La Land winning the Oscar, and then having to give it, give it, 
give it to Moonlight. It's really commentary on the culture and where we're going. So exactly as you were saying. Yeah. Exactly as you were saying. And it's him not necessarily disagreeing with it, but just sort of, I guess, disappointed in it. I think that's a great way. Not, yeah, disappointed is one way to say mm-hmm. it. Um, Especially in someone as big as Jay-Z just watching the growth and being like, man, I'm, I'm the figurehead of what's happening with hip-hop. So I feel like a party might be blaming himself for not being in there enough to help push it even further. I mean, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of the album and for Jay-Z, I reckon this track is fucking awesome because it's definitely a track that he probably needs to speak on and a lot of people need to hear as well. Uh, as for the beat, like I said, I've heard that sample used so much, so I'm not really a big fan of the beat. But Fair enough. But the, yeah, the content's on point. Really did. Yeah, content. maybe he could have gone about it a bit more creative or witty, witty way, but... I was witty about it. I, I think he did his thing. I think he did. I think he did all right. This might be the second last one. Mercy yeah, Me. Yeah. Mercy mm. Me. Mercy Part 2. Yeah. 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 over that <laughs> oh fuck yeah that's a fucking that's a fucking dream and shout out to the dream as well the dream uh, a lot of people don't realize the dream has been hugely influencing in terms of songwriting and uh being a part of production as well for a lot of the late 2000s hip-hop and r&b so he's still very he's still a lot of people don't know about but he's like if you, if you like that rick and morty episode if you watch i always bring up rick and morty and watch you gotta watch that shit it's a fucking amazing show the episode where the, the the president brings up the dream, and he's talking about all these other famous artists, but no one knows the dream. It's a joke that he's as big as other artists, but no one knows him because he works so much in the background. Hmm. Um, and Jay Z, yeah, Marcy Me, nostalgic. Yeah, walk I said it wrong. My bad. My bad. A nostalgic walk through Marcy, and it's about that hopefulness, that feeling of a man. Can I really do this? Can I really be one of the biggest artists in the world? You have these big dreams. Can I be one of the biggest basketball players? We have these dreams, and it's about him just being like, fuck. And he did it, man. And he did it. He's doing it. Well, that's me. So, yeah, just, just being nostalgic of where he comes from, what he's done, and who he is. So, tie, I could tie up really well of what we've done at the start, especially, like, the whole, like, to be like, fuck me, I've done this, I've fucked up. But then the reconcile of him and B being all right and being like, this is, like, it's kind of like the beautiful ending to the shit that he's wanting to get off his chest to begin with. I fucked with it. That was a good track. That yeah. Was, that was a really good I track. I really like the production on that. Like, very, more, I love, mm. uh, uh. A very New York type vibe there. I actually really wish that Jay Z, when he put this album, said Jay Z and No ID. The pro- producers need more love, man. I mean, people know that No ID is going to be all over this album, but I feel like No ID has done so well on this album, he deserves to be put on the album as well. I don't think that's. I don't remember that being done, like having a. A lot of rappers, like. Some rappers will put out albums like this and this, you know, like, like if you're big enough artists, like, say, Static Selector or Alchemist, then you'll probably be like, the joint album will be said, or Michael made it, obviously, as well. Okay. Fair but enough. um, yeah, but no idea. I don't think really cares too much because she's been doing it for just so to long. be a part of this. Just to be a part of this is enough. Honor enough. Me. Yeah. This is the last track we're coming up. Mm, very impressed. Very impressed. Legacy. Legacy. Jay Z. <laughs> Damn, I thought there something was gone. <laughs> nah. Jay Z. That's it. Four, 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 four. Legacy, 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 legacy. Black excellence. Do, you gonna let him see? You wanna see what he says? Yeah. What does he say? The song is just about what it is. It's like a verbal will. Just a song about speaking to my daughter. She starts the song off and she says, "Daddy, what's a will?" That's all it is. Speaking to my daughter. And it's paying homage to his past, like his family, his legacy, the people who came before him. You gotta pay respect to that. And the outro, Don, Donny Hathaway, day someday, we'll all someday we'll be free. So, just hmm. like... Maybe reflecting on the current state of our, so, our society and political uh, unrest that is going along around the world. Hmm. Maybe a subtle way to talk on that. Pre-chorus as well, you run this hard just to stay in pace, keep up the pace. You run this hard just to stay in place. Like, 
It's cool, man. Real, a real soulful way to end the album. Very happy. There's only two tracks this album. There's only, there's only one track of this album I didn't really like. One track that I wasn't sure about. But eight tracks that I generally really... Oh, seven tracks that I really like. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this project. I'm going to go back to this album and listen to it a lot. Especially tracks like... Um, what was the second track? The Story of OJ. Beautiful. Title track. Beautiful. Oh, man. There are some, there are some straight... There are some great bars in this album. This, I feel like that as a whole... Jay Z really touches on his relationship with his wife, uh, reflections on himself. It seems like that's the core, like that's mm. where it started, that's, and it just spurred it yeah. off from all different directions. I feel like directions. the first, the first five tracks of the album are definitely about himself and his relationship, and after that, sort of like being like, "Hey, we're still cool," and then going to more about, "Hey," uh, reminiscing nostalgicness about how he got to where he is, how he feels about where he is, and then just that, him talking to his daughter at the end. Like, I feel like I feel like it's a it's a real good short sweet album that he. He just talks about what he, what he, you know, just good, like, it's good. It's a good fucking album. It's a fucking good album. I'm very, I'm very happy with this Jay-Z album. I wasn't a big fan of Magna Carta Holy Grail. No, I, I like, I like tracks. I didn't like it as a whole. I feel like a lot of the production on there, I think he's been really smart with this album by sticking with one producer. Cause it's and just, it's sticking with 10 tracks. Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Not overdoing it. Being Not cohesive overdoing. with mm. just a minimal amount of tracks. Thank you, Jay-Z, for yeah. doing that. And all of these tracks, I think half the tracks in this album didn't even reach three minutes, so which is great. So a lot of old rap wasn't necessarily long as well. So he's just been like, hey, I've said what I want to say. Right. I don't need to, I don't, Not I don't, overstaying your welcome. Because a lot of rappers be like, oh, this track isn't long enough. Let's just extend the intro and outro or add another hook on there to make it the time like every other track is. He's like, nah, fuck it. Yeah, that's hard to do right. Um, but I feel like this album was one of the more impactful albums to me, um, especially compared to Magna, Holder, Magna Carta. Like, more impactful than that. To me, this um, is... More polished. This is his best album to me since he dropped American Gangster. Right. And that's like back in... What, 2017, 2016? No, nah, before. It is 2017. Oh, sorry, I'm 20, 2006, 2007. Okay. <laughs> now, I see, I was just, I was barely, I was a kid when all that dropped, so I, it's hard to like be like, oh, was this better than this? Is this better than this? Mm. Because, you know, you're older, you're quite, you're a little bit older than me, so you can speak more on it. But like for me, like this is why it's hard for us to do this and, and compare and review especially a guy who's been in the game for so long, I don't know like if this is better than this or this. I just say I really like this album. I loved it. It's probably going to be one of my favorite albums of oh, yeah. the year. I can see this album being my top 10 albums at the end of the year. Definitely. Uh, easily. Yeah. Well, we don't know what else is coming. Well, no, we don't. We don't. Kendrick could drop 10 albums. <laughs> and we go, oh, I'm excited to see if Tyler the Creator drops an album, man. Yeah, he just dropped a single. We might listen mm-hmm. to that. But... To round it off, can you go back to the first track yeah, yeah. and see what he said? So the first track is called Kill Jay-Z. We're just going to run these down and we'll repeat it again for those that haven't heard just so you get an idea about this album. Uh, first song is called Kill Jay-Z and obviously not meant to be taken literal. It's really about the ego. It's about killing off the ego so we can have this conversation a place of vulnerability and honesty. Mm. Which I think is great. Because like, you know, he's always been like, hey, I'm a hustler. I'm a business. Like this him being like, nah, fuck all of that. For now, let me just put this aside and speak to you as a man. Speech was just someone that's being vulnerable and honest right now. And isn't that important to do to start the album, right? Definitely. Because you need to put the ego... I mean, you don't need to, yeah. but... And especially when he puts it back on, he's already said at the start, that hey, like, you know, just you know there's going to be parts here where this is me just showing this, so... But he drops it from the start, then from tells the start, his story. From the start. Right, track mm. two. Track two was fucking amazing, the story of OJ, which I thought... It's probably my favourite track that I've heard off the album. If I had to pick a favourite, probably this track. It's slowly getting annotated now. Mm. Yeah. It's really a song about we as a culture having a plan, how we're going to push this forward. We all make money, then we all lose money, as artists especially. But how, when you have some type of success, to transform that into something bigger. So not necessarily meaning money, but just something bigger on any scale. Like legacy. Exactly. Like impact. Exactly. That, that was fucking cool. Smile, I really like Smile. Yeah. He, that Smile probably had my favorite verse in the album. That verse three, he was just, he just kept going, right? He just fuck kept fucking going, man. That was you scrolling all day. Yeah, I was scrolling all day. Smile is just what it is. That's so dirty. There are gonna be bad times, and those bad times can do two things: they can get you in a place where you're stuck in a rut, or it can make your future that much better because you're experiencing these things. Which I think is a beautiful thing. It's him just saying like, which way you're gonna go about it? You're gonna get stuck in a rut of like fuck or you're going to look at this th- this bad thing that you've been into and improve yourself because so of optimism it. versus pessimism exactly exactly that's, that's what it is so he's just saying smile that shit smile that shit knowing that it's going to make you better because you're going to get out of this hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. That's that's real, man. Yeah. Caught their eyes. That was the track with uh, Frank Ocean I wasn't sure about. I'm probably going to go back to that and we'll see how I feel. Caught the eye is a song that's dealing with just being aware of your surroundings. There's a line and it says, your body language is all remedial. How could you see the difference between you and I? Just being so sharp about your surroundings. So I think it's definitely about, it definitely goes to the thing about Beyonce in a way as well, like being so on point of understanding. Because after that album that Beyonce released, it would be like, fuck, I've done this. She's feeling this way. I think it seemed just being like, be more concerned about his actions and everything around him and just the consequences. <coughs> yeah. Next one. Next one. Uh, this is probably this will be the last one because we covered yeah, the we, other ones. Yeah, we've done the other ones. I think I did this one. We'll we did do it four, again. 444. We'll say it again. This is the oh, album. yeah, he woke up. At, yeah. So this yep. is the crux of the album right 444. here. 444. The crux woke up at 444 a.m. in the morning and was like, fuck, I got to write this song. Wrote it down and he thought it was one of the best songs he's written. It's so powerful and I couldn't agree more. It's probably one of the most powerful tracks in the album. And it sets the tone. And it's and the beautiful about it is it's right in the middle of the album too. I feel like track five and six are so good because this one is him pouring out. The next track is him being like everything's okay. So it's like perfectly set in the album. I can't wait to listen to this more. To Same. me, this is gonna sound uh, uh, a bit um, relax. To me, it's one of my favorite uh, Jay Z albums um, right now. First listen, um, after reading all that, understanding his vision. Um, hearing the production, I'm listening to bar by bar by bar by bar, hearing his cadence on every track. Mm. Um, and I don't really, when I go back to the older albums, they don't really hit me like they're going to hit a lot of other people because I wasn't, a, I was barely, a, I was a very young kid when all that dropped. So I can't really feel it when you're 10 years old, really. I didn't start listening to Jay Z until the Black album. And that would have been, what, 1999? I think that dropped. So we got to keep that in mind, you know, we're younger uh, music listeners compared to guys like The Needle Drop or Big Quint who've been in the game for a while. Um, so we're just coming at it from a different perspective and speaking for a different gem- demographic of people. But I think it's valuable too. Jay-Z. 444. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, fuck yeah, what a dope album. Jungle Beats. Um, if you'd like to support us in helping us improve our sound quality and also just us in general for rent, uh, we have a Patreon. Patreon forward slash Jungle Beats. Is it Jungle Beats? Just Jungle Beats Media? Jungle, Jungle Beats. Beats. So uh, much appreciated, but also you just watching it and giving us support, subscribing, that's also just enough to help us out. Happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll just keep pushing our videos. We're going to get into Vince Staples. We're going to get into Brockhampton. We're going to get into a lot of other shit. Yeah. All right. We got ambitions for this shit, man. Ambitions. Thank shit. you for watching, especially on the live stream. We're about to cut yeah. it now. Thank you very Thank much, you all, guys. Uh, the coolest motherfuckers. Let's, up, just, yeah. let's just check it out. Uh, see if you missed. What did we hey, miss? Hey, Swami. What's up, Swami? You're the fucking realist, man. <laughs>